What do you do if something in your house breaks? You call a handyman. So what do you do if one of your infielders or outfielders break? You call a super utility man. Major League Baseball has long seen the use of the utility man, one who can play multiple positions effectively. However, in the last decade, there has been a rise in super utility players, players who are able to play many positions effectively and on the fly. Center field today and third base tomorrow? No problem. Shortstop gets hurt and you need a guy? Move the super utility man over from second. Help fix your car? Look, even the best of us have limits. But what exactly sets super utility players apart from utility players? There isn't an official answer, so you get my definition. A super utility player is one who plays four different positions, but there are some stipulations. Two of those positions must be infield and one must be outfield. The other position left over? That can be infield or outfield, it doesn't matter. But the player must play four positions total, and DH doesn't count as a position. These super utility types differ from a standard utility player like Cody Bellinger, who just plays first base and center field, or Ha Sung Kim, who plays second base, third base, and shortstop. However, Kim fails to qualify as a super utility player as he is missing one more infield or outfield position. With that out of the way, we can get into the history of super utility players. The 1967 Twins had a player named Cesar Tovar. Tovar played most of the 67 season at third base and center field, although he spent considerable time at second base, shortstop, and corner outfield positions. The next season Tovar would expand his defensive repertoire to every single position. While Mickey Mantle was on his retirement tour and taking it easy at first base, Tovar was doing it all. However, unlike Mantle, Tovar doesn't have a career 172 OPS+, so take that. Tovar sacrificed offensive production for defensive versatility, which is often common among super utility players. He had a 713 OPS in super utility years from 1967 to 1969, which isn't bad necessarily, but isn't great either. After those three years, Tovar transitioned to being a versatile outfielder who sometimes played infield, but only occasionally. Tovar was a pioneer in the super utility field, but was still a little ahead of his time. Next is Tony Phillips, who I'd argue was the first player to really nail the super utility position with a great mix of both offense and defense. Phillips didn't start having super utility seasons until 1988, where he played every position other than pitcher and catcher. Again, however, his offense suffered as he played his way to a 79 OPS+. 1989 was more of the same, but was just a little better finishing the year with a 99 OPS plus in 143 games. He hit free agency at the age of 31, where he signed with the Detroit Tigers. In Motor City is where he would begin to develop more offensively. Tony Phillips often worked well in the leadoff spot, where he used his great eye and fantastic plate discipline. His super utility seasons were mostly from 1990 to 1992, and in that time he had a 114 OPS plus and walked more than he struck out for a 375 on base percentage. After 1992 though, he left the super utility role in favor of moving to a more predominantly outfield position. His solid glove allowed him to play until he was 40, and he ended his career with 50.9 war and is tied with Hall of Famer David Ortiz for 42nd place in career walks. Overall, a very respectable career. The careers of Cesar Tovar and Tony Phillips have shown that super utility is possible, but no player has consistently been a career super utility player. That is, until Ben Zobrist came around. When you think about super utility players, Zobrist is probably your first thought, at least if you know anything about baseball. Drafted by the Astros in the sixth round in 2004, he was flipped to the Rays. Zobrist made his debut in 06, where he struggled offensively and played exclusively shortstop in that season and the next. In 2008, though, Zobrist became the modern super utility player that we know today. Encouraged by Rays general manager Andrew Friedman and manager Joe Madden, Zobrist expanded to playing second, third, 
short, and all three outfield positions. He was a useful asset in the Rays World Series run that season, and he started to contribute offensively in the regular season, putting up an 844 OPS with 12 homers in 62 games. But in 2009, he would have possibly the greatest super utility season ever played to this point. Listen, if you told your friends before 2009 that a utility type player would genuinely be considered an MVP voting and earn an all-star appearance, then you would have no more friends. Seriously though, Zobrist was that good in his 2009 campaign. He ended the year with nearly a classy 3-4-5 triple slash as he played all over the diamond wherever he was needed. He hit 27 home runs and stole 17 bases, so he was no slouch in the power speed department. In total, his efforts amounted to 8.64 on the season, which was even higher than MVP winning catcher Joe Maurer. Zilvers' 2010 season saw a bit of regression as he struggled to the tune of a 96 OPS plus while only hitting 10 homers all season. However, his defensive versatility kept him in his everyday player role. He would take 2011 off of super utility, playing mostly second base and some right field. This seemingly allowed him to rediscover some of his pop as he bounced back to an 822 OPS. In 2012, Zobrist would also retake his super utility role and keep it for the next six seasons. He continued to produce effectively each year with the Rays and even grabbed another all-star appearance as a 32-year-old in 2013. He was traded to the A's in the offseason of 2015 and played 67 games there before being traded to the Royals where he would win his first World Series title. Zobrist also proved himself during that year's ALCS against the Jays where he had a 1,050 OPS in 6 games, while racking up 8 hits, 2 being homers. After the 2015 season, Zobrist hit free agency as a 35-year-old and signed with the Cubs where he would earn his final all-star appearance of his career. Zobrist ended up being a very important part of a Cubs team that would break a 108-year curse of World Series futility. In the 2016 World Series against the then Indians, Zobrist exploded to the tune of 10 hits, which was good for a 357 batting average in the series. He won World Series MVP with his pivotal double down the left field line in the 10th inning of Game 7, which put the Cubs up 7-6. The RBI that Zobrist collected with that hit would be necessary for a Cubs victory as the Indians rallied back. Zobrist's 2016 campaign would be his last great season as he started fading in 2017. Zobrist did still keep his super utility skills and found the last pop in his bat to hit above 300 in 2018. Retiring after the 2019 season as a 38-year-old, Zobrist put up a very solid career triple slash and collected 44.5 career war. After the rise of Ben Zobrist, many teams clamored for a player like him. Who wouldn't want a little Zobrist on their team? Let's take a look at which players were Zobristing in the 2023 season. The Astros' Mauricio Dubon was sort of a surprise this season. After Jose Altuve got hurt during the World Baseball Classic, Dubon filled in for him and hit very well against lefties. After Altuve returned, Dubon resumed his super utility role and moved to various positions around the diamond. While overall he was just below average offensively this season with a 97 OPS+, plus, he remained useful to the Astros and won the American League Utility Gold Glove as he played plus defense at many positions. Spencer Steer is a great example of a young super utility player. Placing 6th in Rookie of the Year voting, he was one of the super utility players who did a great job of mixing offense and defense, racking up 2.9 war while still qualifying as a rookie. His efforts combined with a 119 OPS plus means Steer seems to be on track to be a successful super utility player. And of course, there's Chris Taylor, who is sort of the modern day poster boy for the super utility player. Converted from a shortstop with the Mariners to a super utility player with the Dodgers, Taylor has had better super utility seasons than the one he had in his most recent campaign. However, the Dodgers are one of the teams on the forefront of having widespread positional fluidity on their team. What's that? Simply, the Dodgers want to be able to stick any player in any position. 
they have turned out so many super utility players in the past few years. Since Andrew Friedman took over as president of baseball operations for the Dodgers in 2015, there have been lots of players the Dodgers have converted into super utility players. Kike Hernandez, Logan Forsythe, Chris Taylor, Matt Beatty, Gavin Lux, and Zach McKinstry have all had super utility seasons with the Dodgers. While they all have had varying degrees of success, many of these players have been able to continue their careers as super utility players for other teams. Recall as well that Friedman was the general manager for the Rays when they had Ben Zobris, and the source of the modern super utility man seems to have been found. But why are super utility players just becoming a thing now? Well, it has to do mostly with starting pitchers. Starters are consistently throwing less and less innings each and every year. In 2023, Logan Webb tossed 216 innings, which many see in today's game as a workhorse season as he led MLB in innings pitched. However, only two decades ago, a 200 inning season was seen as an expected number for a starting pitcher. In the modern game though, with pitchers throwing at higher velocity than ever before, the rise in Tommy John surgeries, and the unknown effects of a pitch clock, teams are needing to add more bullpen arms to supplement their starting rotation. An active MLB roster has 26 available spots, and more and more of those spots are being filled by pitchers. The result is a smaller bench, and if those bench players aren't able to fill a variety of positions due to injury or another occurrence, then the team in question is going to have an issue on their hands. This is why the super utility man is on the rise. Less roster spots for players with single positional specialty means the need for more defensively versatile players. While super utility players are typically overshadowed on whatever team they play on, in today's game, they are on almost any MLB roster as a handyman who is able to jump in wherever they are needed to provide a decent bat and glove to the lineup. Although not every super utility man can be the star of the team, unless your name is Ben Zobrist, they'll continue to work in the background cleaning up whatever mess they need to. Thanks for watching all.